Okay, welcome back to the bunker for the Woodworking Essential series brought to you by Timbercon. Now we've been through looking at how we can breathe life back into an old chisel, how we can use vinegar to resurface it. Uh, we've talked about Japanese water stones and a little bit of maintenance and those sort of essential skills you need to get the most out of these products. Now we're actually going to sharpen something. Hallelujah. The first thing we're going to do, and the first step when sharpening chisel, is to flatten the back of the chisel. I can't emphasize that enough. The most important first step is to flatten the back of your chisel. To do that, we're going to use, we're going to start with an 800 grit stone, and we're going to use one of these sharpening stone holders. I recommend them. A, it stops the stone slipping all over the surface, and B, it gets it up to a nice working height so it's easier to, to use the stone. So I'm just going to pop that in the holder. Two little dials, tighten it up, and we're good to go. Now, this stone's been soaking for an hour or so, so it's pretty much good to go. I like to keep the stones relatively clean. The slurry that's created when using the stone as it, as it wears um, is, is, is critical to the sharpening process, but I like to keep it relatively clean while I'm using it. And I also like to top up the water on the surface using a little bit of a squirty bottle as well, which leads to more mess, but hey, Japanese water stones are either all in or don't be them bother, if you know what I mean. So, so I, I, I grab the chisel like so, because you only need to sharpen, say, the first 50 millimetres, first 40 millimetres, or not sharpen, flatten the first 40 millimetres. I've seen people try to flatten the whole length of a chisel. This is really, you don't really need to do that. The first 30, 40 millimetres of the chisel back is all you really need to worry about. So I sort of grab it like so, and I place it on the, on the stone using my first finger as the guide along the edge and using my other finger to push down on the surface. Now this might look relatively easy to do, but it's amazing how people manage to screw this up. They get all uneven and different surfaces, but you want nice, even pressure back and forward. Both hands working together to support the chisel back and forward to start flattening the back of that chisel. Now this chisel, as you know, has been neglected and it's all my fault. I accept responsibility. And I've, I've just run it back and forward maybe a couple of dozen times then on the stone and you can see how this little bright spot starting to appear. And you can see how it's not right across the, the whole back of the surface. These little grey parts remain around the outside edge. That says to me that the back of this chisel is not flat. When you've got flat grey with no shiny spots anywhere, then you know the chisel back is flat. This is going to take a little time. It's a good idea to be organised. I'm not in my own shed here, so I'm a little bit unorganised. Bag, bag. Put some music on and go with it. That's the thing about sharpening, particularly using Japanese water stones. Don't look at this as a chore. Look at this as a moment to take a little time out and think about what you're doing. Think about what you want to create. It's not just preparing a chisel. Sharpening is a way to prepare the mind to make. I've been sharpening or flattening the back of this chisel now for what is it, two or three weeks? Actually, it's probably more like about 45 minutes to get this to where I want it. So I've developed while thinking about this a new law of the universe, which is essentially the longer you leave the chisel from being maintained correctly is directly proportional to how long it's going to take to repair it. So you can see here now that what we want is a perfectly dull back. No little highlighted sections, uh, which indicates to me that the chisel is perfectly flat. Now I've used 800 grit stone and then onto the 1200. 
I really want to start to polish the back of this chisel now because and I'll use a 6,000 grit stone to do that. Now why would I bother going to 6,000 grit on the back of a chisel? Now the reason is, is that when we, we do the bevel of this chisel, when the back, the back and the bevel intersect at this point, two 6,000 hand rub surfaces coming together with very, very, very small scratches means a very, very sharp edge. Now you can go higher than 6,000, up to 10,000, but this being a general purpose bench chisel, 6,000 is going to be enough. I've been polishing this chisel for a while now. It's coming up to a lovely mirror finish. You can see from the close-up that there's a little smudge down this left-hand edge. Um, this requires a little bit more work. I'm not completely happy with it, but right along that leading edge it's looking really good. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time working on the 6000 grit stone now and uh, next time we catch up then we're going to start to polish the 25 degree leading edge. And remember, keep calm, get woodworking.